Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, you're going to learn some useful vocabulary for your academic Task 1 essay. Vocabulary counts for 25% of your overall mark, so this will help you to achieve a high score. The lesson includes understanding the marking criteria for vocabulary, key vocabulary for academic Task 1, and we cover adjectives and adverbs, verbs and nouns, collocations, other useful phrases, and percentages, proportions and approximations. And I also provide a downloadable PDF of the word lists. Before we start looking at the specific vocabulary you'll need for your Task 1 academic essay, it's essential that you understand how vocabulary, also called lexical resource, is assessed, so that you know what the examiner is looking for. We're going to focus on bands 6 to 8, as these are the levels most students are aiming for. Here are the official marking criteria. Don't worry if you don't fully understand them. I explain the main points in the lesson. If you follow my guidance, you'll be able to meet these criteria and get a good score for task 1. The marking criteria can be summed up in a single sentence. It's the ability to use a range of appropriate vocabulary and to use it correctly. Of course, there's more to it than that, and there are three key things you need to do to get a high score. Correct spelling is obviously essential, so I won't say any more about this. The first thing is to use appropriate vocabulary. In your Task 1 essay, you'll be describing data, and this requires some very specific vocabulary that you might only use in this part of the exam. This is what the marking criteria refers to when they mention precise meanings and less common lexical items or vocabulary. We'll go through some lists of specific words in a minute. Second, you need to be able to use vocabulary flexibly. You need to have a wide enough range of vocabulary that you can say the same thing in more than one way, that is, paraphrase. This is what the marking criteria means by the phrase allow some flexibility and precision. You do this by using synonyms. Paraphrasing also involves using different sentence structures, which I cover in the lesson on grammar for academic task one. Thirdly, you must use collocations correctly. The marking criteria specifically mentions the correct use of collocations as something you'll be assessed on. A collocation is a combination of two or more words that sound correct to a native speaker when used together. The word combination often doesn't work if you try to replace the first word with a synonym. For example, we say heavy rain, but not weighty rain, fast food, but not quick food, and keen interest, not eager interest. My advice here is to only use collocations you're 100% sure are correct. These are something to focus on when learning vocabulary, and I include some Task 1 related examples in the words lists that we'll now focus on. In your Task 1 essay, you're required to describe what you see in a chart, graph, table, map or a diagram, most especially to record changes in the data. To do this, you will be using describing words, that is, adjectives and adverbs. Just to remind you, adjectives are words that describe or modify nouns or pronouns, while adverbs are words that describe or modify verbs or adjectives. Adverbs can generally be formed by adding ly to the end of the adjective. On this slide is a table of adjectives and adverbs that can be used to describe large changes. For adjectives we have significant, rapid, dramatic, considerable, sharp, sudden, steep. And for adverbs, significantly, rapidly, dramatically, considerably, sharply, suddenly and steeply. Don't try to learn them all. This is only a very short essay with a minimum of 150 words so you won't be able to include much detail. Learn two or three words for large changes and two or three words for small or moderate changes. 
Here are some adjectives and adverbs for describing small or moderate changes. For the adjectives we have a slight, slow, steady, gradual, moderate and marginal. And for the adverbs we just add that ly for slightly, slowly, steadily, gradually, moderately and marginally. You'll also need some specific verbs and nouns. Again a reminder, verbs are words that describe an action or state, while nouns are words that refer to a thing, a place, a person or a quality. Many words have a verb form and a noun form, as you'll see in the next two slides. You should learn two or three words for upward movement and two or three for downward movement, because you will probably have to write about changes in data. Here are some examples for upward movement. The verbs are to increase, to rise, to improve, to grow, to climb, to jump, to peak and to go up. And the nouns, an increase, a rise, an improvement, growth, a jump, a climb, a peak. And here are some examples for downward movement. For the verbs we have to decrease, to fall, to decline, to drop, to dip, to go down and to plummet. And for the nouns, a decrease, a fall, a decline, a drop and a dip. These words can be used to describe both upward and downward movements. For the verbs we have to fluctuate and to vary. And the noun forms, a fluctuation, a variation. Finally, you'll need a couple of phrases to describe situations that show little or no change. For verbs we have to remain the same, to remain static, to remain unchanged, to stabilise, to level out. Remember to use the appropriate tenses for all these verbs I'm giving you. And a useful noun is a period of stability. Many words in these lists can be formed into collocations that are ideal for expressing change. There are two ways that you can create collocations, a verb and an adverb, or an adjective and a noun. Here are some examples. For the verb and adverb we have increasingly significant, rose steeply, improved considerably, jumped suddenly, fluctuated slightly, fell rapidly, dropped dramatically, dipped sharply. And for adjectives and noun combinations we have a dramatic improvement, a sudden increase, a rapid rise, a steady growth, a slight fluctuation, a gradual decrease, a steep drop and a sharp decline. Again, don't try to learn them all, just pick a couple that you feel comfortable using. Here are a couple of sentences to illustrate how you might use some of this vocabulary in the Task 1 essay. 1. The price of houses went into sharp decline between 1980 and 1985, but increased significantly from 1986 to 1990. And 2. Over the whole time period, there was a steady growth in the number of women choosing to study part-time, but for men the level fluctuated. Here are a few more phrases that you may find useful. Upward trend, downward trend, highest point, lowest point, compared to, in comparison with, relative to, second, third, highest or lowest, for example, second highest, third lowest. The charts, graphs and tables in academic task one questions contain numerical data and you'll gain marks if you're able to vary your language when you present this data in your essay. Using approximations and proportions are an ideal way to do this. We'll start with approximations as they're useful for all types of Task 1 questions. Here are some different words you can use for almost the same, more or less. For approximate you could say roughly, approximately, almost, nearly, about, around, exactly. For more, you could say more than, well over, just above, 
just over, a little more than, a large proportion, a significant majority. And for less you could use less than, well below, just below, just under, slightly less than, a small proportion, a significant minority. Often numerical data is expressed as percentages and you can also use approximations to present this form of data in a different way. Here are some examples. 6% is a small proportion. 23% just under a quarter. 27% approximately a quarter. 48% almost a half. 50% exactly a half. 53% more than half. 72% slightly less than three quarters. 77% roughly three quarters. 85% well over three quarters. And 96% a significant majority. I've created a PDF of these word lists. You'll find it on the Task 1 vocabulary webpage. I've put a link to it in the notes below. You now have more than enough vocabulary to write a high-scoring academic Task 1 essay. Use the lists when you write practice essays and you'll soon become familiar with the vocabulary. And this will help you to choose which words and phrases to learn fully and memorise. You'll also find some useful vocabulary for making comparisons in the lesson on grammar for academic Task 1. Again, you'll find a link in the notes below or look for the video on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Goodbye for now.